Okay, for our start today, setup guide for PlayStation 3 and Resistance. If you like what you see, stay hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel. Just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, and it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm really always grateful for. So today we're gonna get you up and running playing the very awesome Resistance for a man for PlayStation 3. So first of all, you're gonna need the game itself. This is the format I've got it in. So we got PS3 underscore game, PS3 underscore this dot SFB. Inside your PS3 underscore game, you should have these files. So what we're going to do next then is actually download an emulator known as RPCS3. So you can download that one just here. And I'm going to leave the links in my description. So just go to download 64 bit. And if we scroll down, the version I'm using for this video is just here. So just download this. Next thing we're going to need is firmware. So again, link's going to be in my description for this. We're going to go down to update use of the computer and then just simply download PS3 update. Now using Google Chrome can be a little bit problematic to download this firmware. So something like Edge would likely work better and you'll be able to download it with no problems using that. So I've already got the firmware on my desktop. This is titled ps 3 updatepup I've got my emulator just here and this is in a archive so what i'm gonna do is avoid all this and i'm gonna create a new folder so right click on desktop new folder and i'm gonna just call this one ps3 and i'm gonna drag all of those contents of rpcs3 inside of that ps3 folder okie dokes Everything's now dragged into PS3 folder. I'm also going to drag in the PS3 updat.pub, which remember is the firmware. And I'm also going to drag inside of that folder resistance for the man. So we can now delete the archive of uh, the emulator itself, open up PS3. And here we go. So here's everything. Now, whilst I'm in this folder, I'm going to right click new folder and call this one games. And that resistance folder, I'm going to just drag in there. So we got everything now in one nice folder. So let's open up the emulator. And here we go. So first of all, we're going to want to create a desktop shortcut just so it's easier access. And I have read the quick start guides. Do not show again and continue. Okay, so the game's in here. But if we take a look at the log just here at the bottom, it says this missing firmware. So we need to install that firmware to up that .pup file. So we're going to go to file at the top just here, install firmware. And this is going to bring us into the PS3 folder. So in here, we should find that file. Here we go. PS3 up that .pup. Double left click. And this is going to take a little bit of time. And we're going to go to don't show again and OK. Now this is the part I was saying that could take a little while, so compiling PPU module, so don't worry about this, this is just normal. And while this is actually compiling, if you're new to this emulator, then on your first boot of a particular game, any game in fact, you'll find it being very sluggish. You'll also see in one of the corners, building shaders. Normally on your second attempt to play in a game, it won't be so laggy at all, it's just building a cache border. And like I say, next time you open up the game, it should run fine. Resistance for Man is an early PlayStation 3 game and it's been compatible with this emulator for a long time. So it's very matured nowadays and it runs flawlessly. Okay, so that's the firmware now installed. What we're going to do is just right click on the game itself. And from here, we're going to go down to create custom configuration from default settings. Now this game should run without applying any settings, but if it runs fine for you, if you go to GPU, if you're getting a black screen, try disabling Vulkan or rather switching to OpenGL. It works fine for me on Vulkan. We're going to leave default resolution to recommended and the resolution scale just here, we can actually boost this up. So we're going to try 150%, which is 1080p, as you can see. So we've got various different video settings here. And we're going to go to Apply and Save Custom Configuration. We're also going to want to connect a controller. I'm using an Xbox Series controller, which is Bluetooth. I'm going to select X Input for this because I'm using an Xbox controller. X Input Pad, number one, I'm going to leave that there. Now, everything here should be 
configured automatically. If it doesn't do that for you, just left click on each one of these. And as you can see, I'm mapping this out with my Xbox controller. So that's about it. Just don't forget to save your settings. If we open up the game then, double left click. And again, we got the PP modules. So like I say, this is a regular thing for every PlayStation 3 game that you use. It's a bit of a pain, but it's literally a first time for every game that you load up. Second time around, you won't be seeing this. Okay, so that's it, and we're in the game. So we're gonna make this into full screen, double left click or anywhere on the screen. Now this is going to act like a real PlayStation 3, so like it just said, it's installed into the hard drive.
And that's it for today's resistance PlayStation 3 emulator for PC setup guide. It's just a shame that Sony never released these for PC because the entire trilogy of resistance games are amazing. It would be nice to see Sony come up with a fourth game in the series. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit the notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content on my channel. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.